Is int d a good name for elapsed time in days? Now, your original thought would be, well, no, of course not, because d is just a one-letter name. That's awful. But wait a minute. How long should a variable name be? What's the rule for the length of the variable name? Now, consider the for loop. For i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. Do you want that i to be something other than i? The answer is probably not. And so there, there does seem to be a place for single-letter variable names, like i. So what's the rule? What is the rule for the length of the variable name? So here's the rule that I use. A variable name should be proportional to the size of the scope that contains it. If the scope is very small, like one line, a single letter is fine. You don't want to have anything else. If it's a one-line scope, you don't want to have anything else. A single letter is great. D would be a perfectly valid name for a date if D existed only in a single line. Because you wouldn't lose the context. You wouldn't need the name to remind you of anything. The function call that generated the name would be enough. Long scopes need long names. So let's walk through the hierarchy here. Inside of a, an if statement, we've got maybe a couple of lines in that if statement. Variables inside that if statement ought to be very short. Variables inside of a really tiny while loop should be very short. If you have a function, and that function is four lines long, the variables inside that function should probably be pretty short. Because it's four lines long, maybe they'd have to be a little bit longer. Arguments would probably be a little bit longer. A, a word would probably be good for an argument. Instance variables live inside a class. They have a slightly longer scope. They have the, the scope of the class. So probably an instance variable should be long-ish, two words maybe. Functions, the arguments do a member function, probably a word. Global functions. Global functions have a huge scope. They better be very long. Uh, global variables, sorry. Global variables have a huge scope. So they should probably be very long. Variables should have a length proportional to the scope that contains them. What's the rule for functions? Exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. The bigger the scope, the smaller the name for a function. And for very obvious reasons. We would not want to call the open function if the name of the open function was open file and throw exception if not found. As, a, as the scope of the function gets larger, we want the name to shrink. We want the name to shrink because we're going to call it more. A function that lives in a large scope will be called from all over the place, so we want to shrink the name down. Moreover, if the function is in a large scope, it must be abstract. It must be dealing with a high-level abstraction, so we want the name to be short. As the scope containing a function decreases, the name starts to get longer. So the instance, the instance methods of a class will probably have slightly longer names. Private functions called by public functions will have even longer names. Private functions called by private functions will have even longer names. You can continue down that hierarchy for a very long time, especially if you're extracting until you drop. Because you'll extract and extract and extract, and all these extracted functions are going to be private. And every time you go down another level, the name gets longer and longer and longer. And it gets longer because the function becomes more precise. It does something really tiny, really precise that you need words to specify. So the name of a function is inversely proportional to the size of the scope that contains it. 